All of this happened while Congress was meeting to certify the votes of the Electoral College. Check out this photo of the ballots rescued from the Senate floor. Several staff of President Trump have considered resigning because of the violence today after at least three members have done so. Tonight, former Valley Congresswoman Mary Bono is also speaking out, calling today's events beyond belief. I spoke with the Republican today about how she thinks this will impact the president's legacy and the party as a whole. Mary, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to be with you. It's been such a terrible day, but thanks for having me on. Uh, first off, your reaction to what's happening right now in our nation's capital. Well, you know, I received an email from one of my friends, a member of Congress, who said he was shell-shocked. And I think to a large degree, even though I'm not there on the Capitol, I think we are all shell-shocked. This is beyond belief. It is wrong. And the people who are doing these horrible things need to stop. Have you been in touch with anyone in D.C. right now? Yes. Quite a few people, both members of Congress and uh, staffers and people who live nearby, near the Capitol. So, yes, absolutely. There's a, a lot of talk going on, a lot of concern for friends and former staff who are still on the Hill. And, you know, and of course, for Congressman Ruiz and his staff, I, I pray for them and I hope that they are safe and sound. And, you know, it really is a time for level heads right now. Um, this assault on the Capitol is something that I think is beyond any of our wildest imaginations. You obviously know the complex of the Capitol very well. Are you surprised that a mob was able to storm it? That's a great question. You know, and so many answers right now are spur of the, the spur of the moment, top of mind. But, uh, you know, I was there on 9-11. Um, I was there the day that we had two officers who were shot. Actually, I wasn't in the Capitol on 9-11. I was just outside off the grounds. But nonetheless, the day of 9-11, and I think we're always astonished and bewildered about the Capitol's defenses, and we think that they're much more fortified than they are. Um, that being said, how do you anticipate a mob of your fellow Americans conducting themselves the way they did today? You rarely plan for those sorts of scenarios. You plan for a terrorist attack. You plan for, you know, all sorts of things, um, a rogue, you know, a rogue attack. But something like this, I think, was was beyond uh, the planning. And and you know, but you know, I'm hearing talk about they're going to close the Capitol and not have people come on. It's it's way too early to think that. We've sort of we had tightened security on the Capitol after 9/11 and other attacks in Oklahoma City. But I still believe eventually the, the House will be open. It is the people's house, and they will do what they can to both defend the Capitol, protect the members of Congress, and protect the staff, and still allow access to the public, who actually is there for meaning, meaningful and purposeful uh, business. As a Republican, what do you think this does to the legacy of Donald Trump, and how does this affect the Republican Party as a whole? <laughs> You know, when I, when I left Congress, I've tried really hard to not weigh in and be a critic or, or say a whole lot. I have never been a Trump supporter. I think people know that. Uh, and I think this is very bad for his legacy. And I think the threats about him primarying people are what they are. Bring it on. Um, but this really is a test of, of a lot of things. And, you know, for me, at the end of the day, I've always believed that character mattered. And um, I voted for that. I actually... I'm not, <laughs> I'm not tr trying to deny anything here, but I wrote Mitt Romney on, in on my ballot because I've never been a Trump supporter. Um, but that being said, I'm no longer really in the political realm, um, so I try to stay out and not get into too much trouble. I did my 15 years, and now I get to be a regular citizen. Um, but you know, but that being said, the, the frustration for me is to see the hatred that is on social media. I think a lot of it is spurred on by the media itself. I think so many shows, with all due respect, not yours, but people are trying for their ratings. And that means to preach to the choir and to agitate the people who already agree with you and to agitate them further. And, you know, I, I, that's unfortunately what I think has happened recently. And I think we need to get back to our calmer, cooler, and better selves in order to restore our great country to really where it needs to go. And that is a country of debate and ideas. And, you know, we should, we should talk through our differences and come to a consensus. You know, the atmosphere is certainly very different now compared to when you were in office. Where do we go from here? Will our nation come together? Will we heal from this, do you think? Well, certainly I hope and I pray that it does. I believe that with the right leadership, 
of course we'll come back. I think the American people, you know, this is a small fringe group of folks and look, both sides have it. Nobody can claim pure innocence here. And I do believe that there are people who completely agitate the situation to make it wor worse on both sides. But I do believe with the right leadership, uh, we can bring people back together again. And that goes from the president on down in every level to city councils, you know, everywhere in America, people need to get beyond this. They need to rise above it and be better. Um, but that's leadership everywhere. Um, and it does start at the top, but I do believe we'll get back to our better selves. Right now, some members of Congress are calling to impeach the president. I'm curious, Mary, if you were in Congress today, would you support that? Where do you stand on this? <laughs> You're going to get me a lot of trouble today. I'm sure of it. Um, if I were in Congress today, um, I would count my blessings and count my days until there's a transition. And I would do everything I could to move this country forward and put that positive energy into truly moving the country ahead. Look, with the Congress so narrowly divided, there's, you know, people are going to have to work together. They're going to have to talk together. They're going to have to find consensus. I would focus on that. You know, there will be plenty of time for, um, you know, an analysis of the Trump presidency and everything that was wrong. Um, but at the same time, as a member of Congress, I think I would put my best foot forward. I would reach across the aisle. I would talk to them. I would work with them. I would find great friends on the other side of the aisle. And I would work with them to address the, the serious problems that our country is facing. As far as impeaching the president, look, we've, we've done that. We did it with Trump. We've done it. We've done it with President Clinton. No good has come out of either one. Again, I'm talking off the top of my head, but I would spend the next couple of weeks focusing on moving our country forward. All right. Mary, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Be well.